Tensions have spiked in West Asia after the US and UK launched strikes against Yemen. This is in response to drone attacks by Ansar Allah, known as the Houthis, on ships. The Houthis have been warning for a while that ships bound to and from, from Israel would be targeted as part of operations against the genocidal war against Palestinians. Now, the question is, what will be the impact of these strikes by the US and UK, the first since 2016? We go to Abdul for details. Abdul, thank you so much for joining us. A dramatic escalation in West Asia and the Red Sea region, the strikes by the US and the UK. So could you maybe first take us through what the latest reports say, what exactly has happened? Well, as per the statement issued by the American Central Command uh, uh, as uh, on their uh, Twitter page, around 2.30 in the morning uh, on 12th of January, uh, both US and UK forces carried out different kinds of airstrikes inside uh, various locations uh, in Yemen, uh, uh, including capital Sana'a, uh, and uh, Hudaida port. Uh, as per uh, the reports which is coming from the Houthis uh, sources, the uh, there were uh, uh, airstrikes, there were missiles, then there were uh, other uh, uh, means through which they were attacked. And uh, uh, according to the CENTCOM statement, this attack were, attacks were coordinated with uh, several other countries, including Bahrain in the region where the CENTCOM headquarters are. So uh, th this, uh, of course, this attack, uh, though there is no report as yet about the if there are any casualties or uh, there are any uh, military targets uh, which were attacked, apart from the fact that there are reports coming that there, are, there have been attacked carried out. Um, there are reports coming that Joe Biden has uh, basically confirmed that this these attacks were carried out under his uh, uh, instructions. And uh, uh, there are also reports coming that a large number of US congressmen have basically objected uh, to these attacks, uh, pointing the fact that these were carried out without uh, the approval from the Congress, which is uh, as per the US law, which is required. Uh, nevertheless, um, these attacks, uh, as per the CENTCOM uh, statement, these attacks were carried out in retaliation to the Houthis carrying out attacks in the Red Sea for uh, since October 17. Uh, strangely, they argue, uh, they have claimed that these attacks are not linked to Operation uh, uh, Prosperity, Prosperity Guardian, which is basically a maritime alliance particularly made to counter the Houthi attacks in the Red Sea. But uh, uh, that is a strange uh, statement, which basically said that there is no link. Uh, this should also be seen in the context of uh, the on Wednesday, there was a resolution passed by the United Nations Security Council without uh, the consent of two permanent members, which is Russia and China, who had objected the, uh, the drafting of the resolution, which basically demanded the Houthis to cease their attacks in R Red Sea and return uh, one of the ships which they had captured earlier in, uh, I think, in November. So uh, in that context, these attacks were, uh, have been carried out, yeah. Abdul, what does the situation uh, look like for Yemen? Because we know that there has been some kind of a peace process after many, many years of very brutal warfare. There was, you know, some amount of, uh, I, it was not a full-fledged peace, of course, or an agreement had not been signed. But the, it's not wrong to say that maybe there was a bit of stability coming in and also allowing the possibility of aid to come in as well. And now, the, again, the whole situation seems to be at risk. Exactly. If you see the statement issues by, uh, issued by Saudi Arabia, which is considered to be a close military ally of the United States, it has said that, uh, of course, it supports the freedom of navigation, but it does not support the attacks which were carried out uh, in Yemen. Uh, this should be seen in the context, as you rightly pointed out, that after more than eight years of war in Yemen, uh, led by Saudi uh, coalition, uh, there was a, some kind of stability and peace returning since last year, uh, when there was some kind of understanding of kind of uh, undeclared ceasefire um, uh, and uh, peace negotiations uh, between the Houthis and Saudi backed forces in Yemen, also with the Saudis directly. Uh, so this, of course, has kind of, which uh, basically gave a hope that Yemen, which was destroyed due to the war, which became, uh, as per the UN, world's uh, biggest humanitarian crisis in the last century, 
uh, uh, this basically uh, gave hope that there will be some kind of revival, some kind of reconstruction, uh, some kind of restoration of peace and order in that country. But uh, of course, uh, Houthis uh, ha ha were also looking forward to it. But due to the war in Gaza uh, and due to the commitments which Houthis have claimed uh, to the Palestinian issue, uh, of course, they had to, uh, uh, due, due to their ideological commitments, due to their historical links and other uh, factors, of course, they were basically in support of Palestinians in uh, what, is, what is happening to the Palestinians in Gaza by the Israelis uh, with the U.S. support. And that basically has been made an excuse by the U.S. and uh, uh, U.K. to basically launch, relaunch and strike. And this will, of course, if this continues, because Houthis have uh, uh, claimed that they will retaliate to this uh, attack, if this basically continues the way it is continuing uh, uh, the provocations caused by U.S., it may lead to uh, emergence of war there, uh, re-emergence of war and destruction in uh, Yemen. And this will have a regional repercussion already because one should remember that uh, what U.S. did basically is basically violating its own uh, statements which it was making since the beginning of war in Gaza, that the war should not escalate, it should not have regional uh, uh, angle and so on and so forth, but this is uh, the attack carried out uh, on uh, on Friday. Basically, is the most serious uh, violation of the uh, U.S. Uh, dictates uh, U.S. Uh, own uh, commitments of not letting the war uh, spread out to the region, and this will have, of course, a very uh, bad impact on the people in Yemen. But uh, uh, the fact is. Uh, that y Yemenis are also not willing to uh, back down at this moment, given their commitments to the Palestinian cause. Thank you so much, Abdul, for that update. A survey by the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies has thrown up some interesting results. The survey conducted in 16 countries with over 8,000 respondents reveals widespread support for Palestinian resistance and severe unhappiness with the actions of the US and other Western powers. The results are also a challenge to the governments of these countries which have sought to strike a balance between the sentiments of their people and the instructions and interests of the US. We go back to Abdul for more. Abdul, welcome back. Interesting results from the survey and that were at a time when the hearings are taking place against Israel in the International Court of Justice. Give us an outline of what are some of the major conclusions. Well, some of them, uh, some of the conclusions are really interesting. Of course, some of them, some of those things we already can assume that most of the Arabs basically support the Palestinian cause. Uh, in fact, the survey says around 90% of the respondents, 92% of the respondents claim that the Palestinian cause is uh, an Arab cause, not only a cause basically which uh, of Palestinians. This basically also, uh, it basically reverses the uh, the narration which was created in last few years that the most of the Arab people have moved away from Palestinian uh, issue and they have much become much more uh, centered to the local issues or the issues which related to their own uh, 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 states or the nations uh, and that is one basic finding it says that also it says that more than 90 percent of the people believe or, or, or almost 90% of the Arab people across the 16 Arab countries uh, where this survey was conducted, except for Syria and UAE, uh, two major countries apart from and Bahrain, of course. The rest of the Arab countries, most of the other Arab countries were part of this survey. It shows that around 90% of the population believes that what happened on October 7, uh, Hamas and Arab uh, Palestinian, other Palestinian resistance groups carrying out attack inside uh, Israel, uh, what they called Operation Al-Aqsa flood, was a legitimate uh, response, a legitimate act against the decades of occupation, Israeli occupation, their criminal uh, seize of Gaza, and uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, 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 kind of attempts to humiliate uh, Palestinians, not only by attacking Al-Aqsa, but also attacking their homes and their um, other fields and so on and so forth. So that basically, again, busts the myth that the most of the uh, Arab world has basically 
uh, bought the narrative that what Palestinians are doing is an act of terrorism. So this uh, also creates a, a kind of uh, settles that particular debate in to some extent. Uh, one major finding, of course, is related to how most of the uh, uh, most of the Arab people uh, oppose are opposed to any kind of recognition of Israel. And they're opposed to, vehemently opposed to uh, the normalization and particularly with Israel. Particularly, this uh, uh, the number of people opposed to normalization has uh, increased many fold since uh, the war in Gaza began because the Arab Centers uh, does an annual survey from 2011 onwards and it say it claims that this is the highest highest uh, uh, percentage of people saying that they are opposed to normalization with Israel uh, than any year before. For example, in 2022, just to quote one example, around 67% uh, of the, uh, 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 sorry, 38% of the uh, Saudis were opposed to any kind of normalization with uh, 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 with Israel. But in 2000, uh, in this latest survey, around 68% people say that they are completely op opposed to any kind of normalization. Overall figures have reached around 94% in some of the countries, particularly Morocco and Egypt, where the, there was a kind of earlier, uh, there was a declining uh, percentage of people opposed to normalization. Now there was a sudden jump. And more, more than 95%, 94%, 93% uh, people in different countries have basically opposed any kind of normalization with Israel. So these are the findings, of course. Of course, there are other interesting findings uh, related to how uh, most of the people in the Arab world see uh, the, uh, basically that uh, the, the Israeli attempts uh, to kind of portray uh, Palestinians as terrorists or US media in particular portraying them as terrorists, as false narrative, as biased narrative, and 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 does not uh, buy to their bombardment of information, which comes with their ideological uh, agenda. Right, Abdul, also, quick question in terms of how do you think the governments in this region have been sort of responding uh, to not only uh, what is happening internally within their societies, but also to the developments? Have they sort of, you know, managed to sort of uh, address these concerns, these very legitimate concerns, or are they still playing a kind of game in between where they're also adapting to what Israel and the US want? It depends how we see it. If we see uh, the responses of the Arab countries uh, in isolation, of course, we will see that the the, the amount of pop popular mobilization in the streets uh, and the kind of uh, sentiment which the surveys indicate uh, shows that, of course, the most of the governments have not responded uh, to uh, these uh, concerns raised by the people. But if we see it in the larger context and see their behavior, compare their behavior with what happened in the past a few decades, when most of these Arab countries have completely abandoned all Palestinian, uh, most of the Palestinian uh, issues, and they hardly responded to the uh, a repeated offensive, Israeli offensive inside Gaza every year, almost every year since 2005. They, they hardly responded to the blockade uh, imposed by uh, Israel on Gaza, which led to massive deterioration of the living conditions uh, for most of the uh, 2 million Gazans, more than 2 million Gazans. Uh, their response, of course, has much, but has been much more, have much more, uh, you can say, uh, uh, positive in that sense. Uh, uh, if you see, most of them have kind of completely rejected all claims uh, of uh, uh, Israeli right to self-defense uh, made by U.S. Despite the pressures put by U.S., Blinken has visited the region four times uh, since October 7. Uh, they have basically supported all the call, uh, calls for uh, kind of uh, uh, genocide investigation. For example, Arab League uh, has basically came out in support of the South Africa's case in the ICJ, which is ongoing uh, as we are speaking, uh, which uh, given the fact that a large number of Arab countries are very close to US uh, and still they are doing all these things, we should see it in that context that there, because of the, and this is this one, needs to highlight because of the changing geopolitical scenario in the region 
and the global politics because of the changing, uh, uh, you can say, move towards multilateralism in the global politics. The Arab countries have got some kind of um, space where they can now assert their independent foreign policy. And that is the only thing which matters uh, because th there is a growing trend that most other Arab countries are now seeing uh, a space to kind of respond to their popular demands vis-a-vis uh, -vis Palestinians more positively. Abdul, thank you so much for that analysis. That's all we have in today's episode. We'll be back with a fresh episode tomorrow. In the meanwhile, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on all the social media platforms.